Robert Felice is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's a number. And it's Mumbo Rodriguez again. Good evening and welcome back to the Houston Dynapod podcast. I'm your host, Finister, and in a surprise move, quite quickly following our player profile of Maxi Rudy, we've jumped right back in with a player profile on Tyler Pasher. And before we start there, I have a story. It'll be a brief one. I had to cut someone out today. Someone who, over time, took a turn for the worse. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was them. Maybe it was a combination of the two. But either way, I've hit the block button and erased all the memories. Because if I don't, I'll go running back. Because the sex is good. That's the truth. I'm a guy. If I have the number, I'm going to call it. So I had to get rid of all traces and block it after I deleted the contact. Yeah! Woo! Um, I'm sure it's all dudes that listen to this. Except my mom. But uh, if there is a lonely lady out there... I'm single? Again? I guess? Yeah, I am. I am, for real. So, let's talk about it. Not my relationship, Tyler Pasher. Tyler Pasher was born on April 27th, 1994 in Canada. Known for hockey, syrup, and Canadian Mounted Police. He plays for our club, our one and only club, the Houston Dynamo. Now, as a youngster, Pasher became a member of the Woolwich Soccer Association. His pops, his father, his dad... Jeff was the president. He joined this at age six, and he began training with Newcastle United on multiple occasions throughout his youth. If I'm six, and Newcastle United is testing me out, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. My six-year-old self-esteem is through the roof. In fact, my self-esteem is so high, I might be able to open my own Capri Sun. Okay, those straws give those little kids fits. So the first time he went to Newcastle, he went right into training with the academy, something that had never been done. Pasher made contact with Newcastle through a local coach, David Edgar, another Canadian who was at, New- who was at Newcastle. For seven years, 9 to 16, Pasher trained with the club during his two-week school break each March and for two months each summer. He played for the academy between the ages of 9 and 13 before becoming a part of the first team reserves when he was 14 to 16. Unfortunately, a number of difficulties prevented him from fulfilling this dream of joining Newcastle United, the Magpies. Things like a UK work permit, injury, and according to Wikipedia, he was homesick for Canada. So Newcastle must suck all the dicks. I've never been to Canada. I've heard it's clean and lovely and cold. But I've had Newcastle brown ale, and that shit's delicious. Based on that, I think I'd prefer Newcastle. Anyway, Pasher leaves Newcastle United and joins the Toronto FC Academy. Okay. Now, internationally, in 2005 at 11, Pasher was one of the final 140 players narrowed down to the represent Canada at the under 12 level. But he didn't make the cut. That's okay. That's fine. It happens. He was invited back the following April, to try out for the next edition, and he received his first team call-up for a pair of U-17 friendlies against Mexico. We know how that one's going to go. Yeah, so against Mexico, they lose 3-0, which you knew that was going to happen. Pasher, however, is named to Canada's final under-17 squad for the 2011 FIFA Under-17 World Cup. But he had a concussion and dropped out. This poor guy. Oh my god. Just injuries and work permits. Oh my. In July of 2012, he was named to Canada's U-20 squad for a training camp and two friendlies in Mexico. In 2013, he was included in Canada's U-20 squad for the 2013 Francophone Games in Nice. Or Nice. I'm American. It was in France. Pasher goes on to appear in two of Canada's three matches in the tournament. In May of 2014, head coach Benito Floro, that sounds Canadian, calls Pasher up to the senior squad for the first time for a training camp. 
for friendlies against Moldova and Bulgaria in Austria. But once again, he withdraws because of injury. Bro, are you okay? I don't know. That's a terrible run of luck. God, that's awful. You gotta be like... For you to keep doing this and keep plugging away after all of this stuff, kudos to you, Tyler. So, Tyler gets called up to the senior squad again as an injury replacement for Sam Edekugbe and Andre Hinault in March 2015 for friendlies against Puerto Rico and Guatemala. He doesn't appear in either match, but he does get named to the bench for the game against Puerto Rico. Now that stuff all ties in because it happens most of it before what I'm about to tell you. Pasher is in Toronto FC for a little bit, not long. He signs a 1 plus 2 contract with the PS Kimi Kings in the Kakanon, the third tier of Finnish football, in April of 2013. He debuts in 2013, April 24th, in a 2 nothing defeat to VPS in a Finnish Cup match. He makes his first league appearance for the club in a 2-1 win over Kerho 07. Sounds like they have a lot of history. Pasher scores his first goal for Kimi on the 19th of May in a 2-2 draw with Vasa IFK. Pasher makes 22 appearances, scores 11 goals in the regular season as they win the Northern Division but lose 2-0 in the promotion playoff to HIFK with Pasher appearing in both legs. Good for you, Ty. That's a good run. 11 goals and 22 appearances. They don't even list your, your assists. You had at least one. That's good numbers. So Pasher leaves. P.S. Kimi, Kamai, begins training with Lansing United of the National Premier Soccer League. He was unable to appear because of contractual complications with his former club. Pasher was home for the summer. He decided to join the club because a good friend was an assistant coach. And he was like, I'll stay fit. Well, I get signed by a real club. It's basically what it says. At that time, it was believed Pasher would return to Toronto after he impressed head coach Ryan Nelson. But Lansing head coach Eric Rudlin says, he fell into our lap through a comedy of errors. In total, Pasher made 10 appearances during his time with the club. He scored three goals and had six assists while, wait for it, battling injuries after he decided to stay for the club. He was named to the National Premier Soccer League's top 11 team and helped Lansing win the NPSL Great Lakes Western Conference title in the club's first season. Sounds like, a, sounds like, sounds like a drop. What happened over there in Finland? So in January 2015, Pastor signs with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds of the USL. Right, April 8th, it's renounced. He received his international international transfer clearance, and he can now play against St. Louis FC. In the third match of the season, he makes his debut on April 11th, and two weeks later, he scores his first goal, which was also the final goal of a 5-1 to one thrashing of Toronto FC2. Pasher finishes the season with 21 appearances, two goals. Riverhounds finish fifth in the Eastern Conference Finals, but Pasher doesn't appear in the playoffs as the Riverhounds lose to the New York Red Bulls 2 in extra time. Pasher signs next with Swope Park Rangers. Makes his debut on March 26th in a 2-1 win over the Portland Timbers. Pasher scores his first two goals in the same game on May 15th against the Tulsa Roughnecks. They work in the oil fields. Roughnecks do. They also, I think they hang out with DMX. I know those are the Rough Riders. My bad. Uh, in August 2016, Swope Park's MLS affiliate announces Pasture had been signed on a short-term loan to play in the CONCACAF Champions League against Central FC. He makes a CCL debut in a 1-2 defeat Aww. in 2016. They lose to the Whitecaps. We don't like Vancouver. We don't. I don't think we like Sporting KC either. So, he gets called up for the final match of the group stage. The return fixture against Central FC. Pasture has uh, no stats in those games. It's not until five days later that he actually gets on the score sheet with a goal and an assist to help Swope Park defeat the OKC Energy 3-0. What is your energy? Natural gas. He ends a regular season with five goals and an assist from 24 appearances. Okay. An involvement every four games. Right? Ratios here, guys. 
The Rangers finish fourth in the Western Conference and qualify for the playoffs. Pasher plays every minute of Swell Park's four playoff games. And he has three assists to help the Rangers reach the final, where they lose 5-1 to one to the New York Red Bulls. It seems like every player profile, every guy is getting to the promotion playoffs or like the final of some cup, and they lose. That's like, is that is that how we scout people? Hey, I want you to find me all the guys that have almost won it all and played a bunch. It's Matt Jordan's filter on his, his Google filter. USL players that almost won. All right. Sporting Kansas City. Pasher signs a first team deal with Sporting KC in 2016. Um, he spends most of that season on loan with the Swope Park Rangers. He gets three assists and 24 appearances. Swope Park qualifies for the playoffs. Pasher plays three times in the playoffs. Wait for it. The Rangers reach the final. Pasher doesn't appear in the final. You guessed it. They lose 1 0 to Louisville on November 27th after they just lost again. Sporting KC and Swope Park announced they will not exercise Pasher's option for the 2018 season. Now, Pasher is briefly traded to Atlanta United, but he doesn't sign. Instead, he goes to the Indy 11 of the USL. This is where you guys all know him from. He makes his debut for the Indy 11 on March 24th, and they win. On April 7th, he scores his first goal to give Indy 11 a 1-0 win over North Carolina FC. That short season, Pasher scores one goal and one assist in 10 appearances. And because Indy finished 7th, he did not appear in the playoff games. On April 20th, Pasher scores his first goal of the new season to help Indy defeat Bethlehem Steel. I wonder what they do. He scored in the 84th minute to give Indy a 1-0 win over the Charleston Battery. Pasher scores five goals and has one assist during a six-match stretch in June. That's pretty good, right? Including a game-winning goal in the 89th minute against Luton United. Indy has five wins and one draw this month. Pasher ends the regular season with 32 appearances, 11 goals, and four assists. Indy finished third. They go to the playoffs. They reach the conference finals. Wait for it. They lose. Two. Wait for it. Louisville. Again. Different team. Same result. I would hate Louisville right now. I would be very mad at Kentucky. Not just for Mitch McConnell's neck. They have good chicken. So to start the 2020 season, Pasher and the Indy 11 beat Memphis 901. Sounds like a bad TV show. 4 to 2, Pasher scores twice and adds an assist. Shortly thereafter, the USL championship is paused because of the coronavirus. The coronavirus, the COVID. I got my first vaccine. Uh, felt fine. Arm was a little sore. Get your vaccine or don't. If, or don't, if you think that like Pizzagate was real and uh, uh, other stuff of that like of that nature, don't get your vaccine. If you think they're going to blue chip you, don't. It doesn't matter. We're all blue chipped anyway. They have our phones. All right, they can see me right now. They know I'm telling on them. As we speak, they're recording this, and now they're like, "He knows, we know. What now? Call Hillary Clinton." So, Indy goes back to play on July 11th. Pasher scores once in a win against St. Louis FC. Pasher scores again in a 2-1 win over Sporting KC2. Pasher scores again against the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, his old team. He's now scored in six straight games, including Indy's final two games of the 2019 playoffs. Pasher's going to finish this season with 10 goals and two assists and 15 appearances. But Indy doesn't make the playoffs. His goal tally was the fifth highest in the league, He's named the 2020 All-League second team, and he's named the USL Championship Player of the Month for July and makes the team of the week four times. On January 14th, 2021, roughly two months and one week ago, Pasher signed with the Houston Dynamo. And I know right now you're, you're, you're waiting, you're wondering, hey, Finister, what do you, what do you think he's going to do? I, I don't think he's going to do much. I mean, last year we had Lasseter and Limon come in, and they didn't do much. I don't think he's going to do much. For him to get 
Oh my. Any more than who oh, three goals or five assists. Either one or both. Both would be amazing. For him to put up more than three goals and more than five assists in this season. It's going to be very hard unless heaven forbid a tidal wave of injuries hit our club. I think you'll see him at the end of games. I think he'll make the bench a lot. I think he's going to bring a lot of energy. He seems like a real go-getter. I know that term is fucking lame, but he seems like a go-getter. Um, you got to admire his stick to You look at what he went through early in his career with the rejection, the injuries, the work permit problems. You have to admire the fact that he stuck it out. So I think what we have here is he's an Eric Lamella without the Rabona. He's going to go up and down. He's going to track back. He's going to tackle hard. He's not going to take shit from anybody. I think. I'm basing this all off of what I've read. But you can learn a lot about someone, about the amount of failure in their life and the fact that they keep on going. So guys, I don't know where that all came from, that deep, thought-provoking dialogue right there. But I do know that's a great place to stop. This is me, Finister. This was the Houston Dynapod podcast, player profile of Tyler Pasher. Like the show, subscribe, rate, tell your friends. People can even donate money. If you want to do that, do that. I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon. Until we do the next player profile, it's been a pleasure. And as always, go Dynamo! Albert Delis is going to get there. There's no question. He squares it. There it is. It's another. And it's Mumble Rodriguez again. 